what's up everybody welcome back to exotic gas logic again and today we will start with the second chapter of the bhagavad gita i'm very excited because from the second verse of the second chapter lord krishna starts speaking to arjuna yes and till now we saw that arjuna has undergone a paralysis he is giving different reasons why he cannot fight the war so if you have not watched the earlier videos then my humble request is please watch the videos earlier all right otherwise you <coughs> may not understand what i am speaking here all right and now the game begins arjuna has kept his gandiv down which is his most celebrated bow and now he is saying i cannot fight therefore lord krishna will start speaking very soon all right if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you have not watched the earlier videos on the gita series please go and watch them and if you want me to make any other video then please let me know and if you want a consultation then approach me through my website below and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him you will anyways find him because he is going to speak now and before we begin on the gita as i offer prayers to my preceptors who have bestowed the divine wisdom unto me by saying om agyan timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurave nama all right so what is the name of the second chapter the second chapter is named as contents of the gita summarized should i repeat contents of the gita summarized so this is kind of a summary of whatever is going on in the entire gita all right all right so now sanjay speaks to dhritarashtra who is sitting in kurukshetra no no they are sitting in hastinapur yes so sanjay is the sarathi the charioteer of dhritarashtra but because dhritarashtra is old is blind so he does not take part in the war and he is sitting there in hastinapur hearing from sanjay about the happenings of the war and the war which is going on in kurukshetra between the pandavas and the kauravas which has not yet started i mean officially the conches have been blown and they have signaled that the war is on but the physical fight has not yet started so arjuna has told krishna that please take my chariots in between both the army so that i can see who is there on both the sides and then he uh, will decide what to do and then when he sees bhishma drona and all his cousins on both the sides then he undergoes paralysis he says how can i kill all these people yes all right so i am expecting that you have seen the earlier videos so now i will start so second chapter first verse sanjay vacha sanjay speaks tam tatha kripaishvitan ashru punarak kulekshenam विसीदीतांतम इदम वाक्यम उवाचा मधुसूदना संजय असेड सीइंग अर्जुना फुल ऑफ कंपैशन हिज माइंड डिप्रेस्ड हिज आईज फुल ऑफ टीयर्स मधुसूदना कृष्णा स्पोक द फॉलोइंग वर्ड्स सो नाउ संजय इज टेलिंग लॉर्ड कृष्णा हैज सीन द पैथेटिक सिचुएशन व्हिच अर्जुना इज इन so he's telling arjuna's mind is depressed he's full of tears and now krishna is going to speak so sometimes we also have the similar situation in our lives right we are depressed we are full in tears so now lord krishna is going to speak so hear carefully so i'll speak what lord krishna says later but now i'll just uh, explain this purport the purport to this verse is material compassion lamentation and tears are all signs of ignorance of the real self my god bomb in the first line only material compassion lamentation and tears are all signs of ignorance of the real self so if somebody is having compassion on a material level which means oh this person is my wife this person is my husband this person is my son my father what will happen to them after i die or lamentation oh my god i had a break up i lost this person i lost her i lost him <laughs> my husband passed my wife passed lamenting basically that you lost something and tears because of tears what happens you start 
crying <laughs> then tears come out right so because of compassion there is lamentation and then there are tears these are all signs of ignorance of the real self real self means who is the real self here the soul the atma so when you are unaware of the fact that you are spirit soul you are atma you are not this body then the atma identifies itself to the materialistic things of this world and then there is compassion lamentation and tears compassion for the eternal soul is self realization so when we think of somebody on a level of soul which means we think in ways to improve their spiritual life by helping and giving them facilities so that they can uh, take commitments towards their spiritual journey that is actual compassion actually that's what uh, sanja is meaning here compassion for the eternal soul is self realization the word madhusudana is significant in this verse lord krishna killed the demon madhu so who is madhusudana here madhusudana is the name of lord krishna one of the names of course he has thousands and millions of names so what the word madhusudana is significant in this verse lord krishna killed the demon madhu and now arjuna wanted krishna to kill the kill the demon of misunderstanding that had overtaken him in discharge of his duty so now krishna has been indirectly hinted by arjuna that oh my dear krishna you are known as madhu sudana means sudana means one who kills okay so madhu was a demon who lord krishna had killed so now arjuna is telling lord krishna that oh krishna you are so great you once killed this demon madhu but today there is another demon inside me na because of whom i am not able to execute my orders responsibilities and duties so please the way you killed madhu kill this demon inside me also that's what arjuna is meaning all right no one knows where compassion should be applied compassion for the dress of a drowning man is senseless my god compassion for the dress of a drowning man is senseless so if somebody is drowning if you say that oh your dress is so beautiful now your dress is also going down so that's foolishness because the person is drowning so what this means is that when we are compassionate for somebody on the bodily level but we are not concerned about his or her spiritual progress then that is useless actually A man fallen in the ocean of nations cannot be saved simply by rescuing his outward dress the gross material body So a man fallen in the ocean of nations cannot be saved simply that means if somebody is drowning in this material existence you cannot save him simply by rescuing his outward dress that means by giving him food clothing shelter as in hindi they say roti ka prama kaan that means the gross material body so we should take care of his spiritual needs first all right one who does not know this and laments for the outward dress is called a shudra <laughs> shudra is one who does not know that there is this concept of soul and he or she always laments that oh my god i have lost this person that that person died he lost his job he got divorced what will happen or one who laments unnecessarily why unnecessarily because ultimately anyways the body is going to die so there is no use of lamenting for the body we should be concerned what is happening to the person on the level of spirit all right only then can we say that we have transcend that the level of a shudra otherwise we are behaving like a shudra here arjuna was a chhatriya and this conduct was not expected from him See, Arjuna was a chhatriya means he was a warrior he was the princely class he was supposed to execute his duties of punishing the miscreants who had insulted the the their wife Draupadi and tried to do so many nefarious activities to the Pandava brothers and if they would sit in the throne especially Duryodhana Dushasana Karana and Chakuni there would be complete mayhem in the society right so it was Arjuna's duty as a chhatriya to punish them but he was least interested in doing so so that's what he said here arjuna was a chhatriya and this conduct was not expected of him 
Lord Krishna, however, can dissipate the lamentation of the ignorant man, and for this purpose, the Bhagavad Gita was sung by him. So, Lord Krishna has the power to throw away the lamentation of anyone and everyone, and that is why he spoke the Bhagavad Gita. So, it's written, the Bhagavad Gita was sung by him. All right, why it's saying uh, sung? Why not said? Because Bhagavad Gita basically means Bhagavad refers to God, Bhagavan, and Gita refers to song. So it's like a song which God is singing. Yes. So he's singing this song. He will start singing from the next verse, of course. This chapter instructs us in self realization by an analytical study of the material body and the spirit soul explained by the Supreme Authority. So in this chapter, we will know the signs of the analytical body and the analytical study of this material body basically and the spirit soul so how is the material body different from the spirit soul what is the body what is spirit soul okay those things we will be studying in this chapter as explained by the supreme authority so who is the supreme authority lord krishna himself all right lord sri krishna by the supreme authority lord sri krishna so he is the ultimate authority to speak on tattva gyan which is soul and body who else can be a better speaker than god himself the realization this realization is possible when one works without attachment to fruitive results and is situated in the fixed conception of the real self so this is only possible when we give up our attachment to fruitive results that means suppose Fruitive results means that which bears fruit. For example, we have done something and then we are expecting the fruits of that. For example, if a student studies and he's expecting, oh, how much marks will I get? Will I get 100 or will I get 90? So this realization is possible when one works without attachment to fruitive results. So it is that the work which you do, you should do it in a, such a way that you are not attached to the results all right you don't think if i get if i don't get the results what is going to happen and is situated in the fixed conception of the real self so when we work without thinking of the results and we are situated in the fixed conception of the real self that means we are at the level of the soul then we see that uh, this tattva gyan which is the knowledge of the soul and the body can be realized properly so now what I will do is just for anticipation, I'll just read the next verse, but we will not explain it now. We will explain it later. So there you go. Text two, second chapter, Bhagavad Gita 2.2. Lord Krishna starts speaking. Excited? Yes, yes. I am very much excited. Shri Bhagavan Vacha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Kutastva kashmalam idam vishame samupasthitam anarya jushtama swargyam akirti karam arjuna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon you? How? Krishna is asking, how? <laughs> they are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life. They lead not to the higher planets but to infamy. We will not explain this now. In the next video, we will explain this. Okay. All right. There you go. Lord Krishna will start speaking. So the important part in this video is that uh, Lord Krishna is going to explain the differences between the body, the working of the material realm and the spirit soul. And then Lord Krishna is also going to counter all the arguments which Arjuna gave. Okay. One by one, serially, he is going to smash into powder, into dust all the arguments of arjuna which he gave because of which he said i don't want to fight okay so now lord krishna will come and counter them and by that arjuna at the end of the gita will stand up with his gandiva and say yes i'm going to fight i'm going to kill all the nefarious people out there all right there you go lord krishna just started speaking so stay tuned from the next verses because now god himself is going to speak here so we must listen very carefully yes there you go. Thank you very much for watching this video till the end. And if you have any questions, queries or comments, then please let me know. If you like this video, click the thumbs up. And if you want a consultation, then approach me in my website below. Yes. And 
if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it okay and if you have any questions queries or comments regarding any video or you want me to make any other video then please let me know in the comment section all right until next time wish you good luck stay tuned be enthusiastic have that anticipation that lord krishna is going to speak now all right until next time see you bye bye